My name is The Extravagant, and welcome to Kamuhana. Hi there. Now, I want to make a disclaimer before I make this video. Keep in mind that Kamuhana is not in any way beginner friendly to people who are new or don't really know much about biology or speculative evolution. Kamuhana is a speculative biology project, and it is also a passion project designed for me to help improve my skills on speculative biology. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's make a world. Funnily enough, before we make Kamuhana, we need to make the two other equally vital celestial bodies in this system. The main star of this system, Namoa, is a type G star, and it is quite similar to the sun itself. So this solar system will be aptly named the Namon system. The moon of Kamuhana is also quite similar to the moon on Earth, albeit just a bit larger and a bit closer. Other than that, it's not too notable. Now we get into the real meat and bones of this project, the most important celestial body in the entire project, Kamuhana. Kamuhana itself is generally warmer than Earth, and it also has a lower gravity. I also imagine it being slightly larger too. Here we have the atmosphere of Kamuhana. It's very similar to Earth, but it's slightly denser, and keeping all the other aspects in mind, the planet will have very few deserts, even in the equator. Here we have the map of Kamuhana. Kamuhana has four unsubmerged continents in total. And those continents are... Daragona is the large eastern continent. It is notable for having one of the only deserts in the world due to its large rain shadow. Rain shadows appear due to a mountain blocking precipitation on one side. And the mountain in the middle of Daragona tells us that there might be a submerged continent here in Kamuhana. Hachua is a less notable but small continent underneath Daragona. There's not much to talk about here other than it being a smaller continent. On the other hand, Atita is the southern arctic continent of Kamuhana. Due to planets being spheres and continents having to surround a planet, this side is a bit of a mystery. Polonica is the largest and quite frankly an islandy continent that is west of Kamuhana. It has a large mainland and tons of not so notable islands. Now let's go check out the climate of these continents and how they affect water currents on Kamuhana. As you can see here, there are not many dry areas on Kamuhana. And these are the water currents of Kamuhana. Now that you've sat through my monotone voice for three minutes, let's finally get to the more interesting parts of Kamuhana itself. Say, the life? If you're trying to find life here on Kamuhana right now, you're gonna need to look a little bit smaller. Use Stoma Brachia is the first ever clade we are going to cover here on Kamuhana. It is very basic and only has a few features. This clade does not have an anus, but it has gonads and a respiratory surface to breathe off of. It has a notably basic three-mouthed digestive system with no through gut on it. Due to their tiny size and their inability to swim against the current, these creatures will be planktonic, also known as plankton. As the wide variety of planktonic organisms start to rule Kamuhana, one species of plankton will decide to go onto the ocean floor. This creature evolves significantly more segments alongside turning its facial limbs into an extra six limbs. This creature also evolved eight eyes alongside a nervous system that contains two almost brains, but it's kept its respiratory surface. We'll call this slightly hard-skinned creature polysoma, meaning multiple bodies. It'll roam the ocean floor in search of food soon after the Eustoma brachids evolve but there's always bigger fish to worry about. One of its close cousins that's also sensing its way around the ocean floor loves to breathe in oxygen with its closed circulatory system. It has four eyes, six legs, and less segments than the other clade. It uses hydraulically powered legs and a very basic form of blood to move around. We'll call these four-eyed freaks hexapodia, meaning six legs. Yes, I know. 
very creative name, and totally doesn't have the same name as one of the most diverse animal groups on Earth. Here on Kamuhana, we encounter yet another predator, though strangely enough, this one doesn't move around, and isn't even closely related to the Eustoma brachids. Tribrachida is a radial creature, or even trilateral creature, that hides in its iron calcium based shell. It sticks to the floor with beak-like structures on the bottom of its body. Just like all other creatures here on Kamuhana as of now, it has a closed circulatory system, but it has a very interesting anatomy. It has a multitude of respiratory organs and even slightly separate nervous systems, with the main one being under the stomach. Trilateral symmetry is a unique form of radial symmetry, a form of symmetry that follows a radial axis. Stuff like starfish and even tulip flowers have this form of symmetry, though I don't believe that these creatures have trilateral symmetry. Next, we move to an equally interesting creature that actually feeds on detritus and dead matter. Vermeozoa is a very close cousin to Tribrachida that also looks pretty similar, but also quite notably different, due to its worm-like appearance. It keeps calcium iron-based elements about itself alongside its three eyes and unique anatomy. As you look at their anatomy, you start to see similarities between them and the Tribrachids. This tells us that they probably had a close common ancestor. These creatures exclusively feed on dead biomass. These creatures will feed on dead animals, dead plants, poop, and even other dead creatures of their own species. Smaller species may actually be a common prey item for other animals. As quick as that may have been, that actually concludes all the creatures on Kamuhana I'd like to cover today. Of course, there's other smaller clades that may have evolved in this time, and there's even some plants, but I don't really want to go into those as they don't matter as much. Other than that, that might actually conclude our video. But before I end off the video, I would like to discuss a few things. First of all, just thanks a lot for watching the video in the first place. I mean, it means a lot to me because I'm a small creator, you know? And on another and possibly more shocking note, this episode has taken me two years to make, due to a lot of factors. Things like laziness and mostly procrastination, but also a not-so-arbitrary nine-month absence from the internet that only allowed me to do Kamuhana sketches. But, I'm here now, and I finished the goddamn video. Let's go! Still makes me kinda sad, knowing that I could've finished this a lot sooner, but hey, you win some, you lose a few hundred. But yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to say in the outro. So yeah, thanks a ton. And thanks a lot more to the artists that actually contributed to this video. Even if it wasn't that many, your work still helped out quite a bit and has not gone unnoticed by me. And that's basically it. So uh, see you soon, I guess. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell on that subscribe button because that would mean a lot to me if you want to see more Kamuhana. Um, yeah, I'm kind of tired. I'm going to take a month break now. See